And welcome back to another episode of All of Fabric 5, where uh, some things probably look a little bit different. Because I started chopping down all of the mushrooms uh, around the island um, for a bit until I got bored. Uh, but I'm not going to be doing that today, I'm just kind of getting prepared for potentially building a structure here. Uh, because as I've mentioned in like the past couple of episodes, time for recording is a little bit weird at the moment, so I kind of have time where I can uh, work on the base, but I can't record anything. So uh, it might be time to start thinking about some kind of design, and I have a vague idea in mind, and it requires lots of mushrooms. We'll see how we go. We've got a bit. We've got a bit. We've got 4,000 mushroom blocks here, 4,800, a bunch of these. Uh, we'll probably want to set up some kind of farm if I actually go through with the idea. Which is kind of like a factory and giant mushrooms and it's based off uh, a picture I'll try and put on the screen now which is generated by like an AI bot we have on the Discord server. And yeah, that looks kind of cool. I don't know exactly how I'll pull it off but that could be kind of neat to have like a giant mushroom uh, or a couple of giant mushrooms in kind of a factory thing as well. Might be the go. Might be the go. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens though. We'll see what happens. So. Uh, in between episodes, aside from clearing all this stuff out, I now have mending on all of my gear. Uh, and I've got a few levels as well. Now the mending, that was... That was a process, let me tell you. So if we pop over to this mushroom village... There is a house here. <laughs> And inside is a villager who has escaped a little bit. Um, and I kind of had him, kind of had him like that. Yeah, you can probably stay there. Uh, and he trades mending books, which is nice. Uh, and Gale, which gives you a double jump, which actually could be kind of cool, kind of cool. But uh, that took a long time. It took a very long time to get that book. I would say uh, almost half an hour to three quarters of an hour of break the lector and place the lector and break the lector and place the lector. Now, of course, we could go and get. I think it's the Dark Enchanter. I think it's the Dark Enchanter. I um, mean, this kind of lets you pick the enchants you want, but you need a lot of experience for it. Uh, which we don't currently have. So, uh, let's get our rubber bits and pieces off, get the armor on. Yeah, and I just did that because our armor's getting kind of broken. And I want to do, like, dark enchanting stuff uh, on camera, essentially. So I didn't want to go and uh, set all that up and then, just like, hey, in between episodes, I set up a full dark enchanting setup. Because that seems kind of cool. But yes, we left off last episode having constructed this monstrosity here. Who's currently running, and he's turning Steam Crack Naptha into all sorts of things. Uh, just as a quick refresher, Steam Cracked Naptha turns into all of these things, and yeah. I don't know if we use this for anything else. We can make acetylene. Yeah, I've used acetylene before in real life. Um, you can like weld metal with oxygen and acetylene. Uh, yeah. Um, I also expanded this part of the factory, um, so it's just, you know, stone under there, uh, and this is, I think, going to be where we do the keeping stuff in stock thing. Still haven't had an update to all of fabric that fixes that bug where if you do the keeping stock into a uh, one of these interface things, or if you try and do any crafting into an interface thing, rather, you end up with mana instead of the item, which is not ideal. Let's have, let's have a nap. Uh, but I think we can get around that bug by just going into a chest, so we might do that. Because if we don't carry on with, like, enchanting or getting into some more deep marble learning, I'd probably carry on with some more modern industrialization. Um, oh, we can, we can definitely get some titanium. I've been processing a heap of titanium. We've got a whole bunch more we can process. Uh, we're getting all of this tiny titanium dust from processing the bauxite dust. We get quite a bit of that. Um, so yeah, this, this, we get a bunch more titanium going. 
Uh, so we got... Yeah. Steel, but pink. Uh, sure, I think titanium's harder. Uh, so we could do... Some more there, some copper gears. Neat. Uh, we can carry on and get like iridium. I think we only get that from titanium drills. Uh, but that's going to require the processing unit. Which I think is the next big part of modern industrialization. So digital circuits we can craft. This would be a fantastic thing to keep in stock because it's very slow to craft this. So if we kept, say, I don't know, do we keep a stack of these in stock? That might be <laughs> might be a bit painful. We could do that. Um, and maybe that's a good thing to focus on. Let's look at the processing unit. Let's see how far we can get. So digital circuits we've done. RAM we haven't done. Memory management units we've never looked at. I've never touched an arithmetic logic unit and a processing unit board. Polyvinyl chloride. That's a thing we need. We need platinum. We need cadmium. Now, I believe I actually have some of this because I needed some neodymium stuff. So that might not be too bad. Cadmium could be okay. Platinum. Uh, hot platinum ingot. Platinum dust. Small piles of platinum dust come from electrolyzing. Uh, we might have to go this route, which could be cool. I don't think we have any platinum. Uh, doesn't the titanium drill get us our iridium and uranium? Platinum ore we get from our stainless steel drills. We probably have some platinum ore. But I think you can only, you can macerate it, and then you have to do the sulfuric acid thing. So we might have to do that. Uh, the rest of that looks fine. Arithmetic logic units, dumb plates. Uh, all of these gates I think we have made before, so that's actually fine. Platinum fine wire we haven't done, a silicon wafer we haven't done, and emerald plates we haven't done. Lubricant and this isn't a cutting machine, so that's not too bad. But we haven't made a monocrystalline silicon thing. It requires argon. I think we're getting argon. Iridium we don't have. Silicon we make. And it's just in a blast furnace. And we don't have a blast furnace that accepts liquid yet, but we can certainly do that. And then RAM is the other thing, which needs silicon wafers. Styrene butadine rubber we haven't made and we need some argon. Okay. So a bit of setup later and we can now request a processing unit, but of course uh, here's the bits and pieces we're missing. Now I might actually get the digital circuits going because I know they take ages. Um, let's get eight of them. And that's going to take a long time. This would be a absolutely uh, excellent thing to keep in stock. <laughs> Go. How does one digital circuit take that many steel plates? Uh, cool. So I've ran an extra uh, thick cable. And yeah, we're not using P2P yet. We might. I don't know. I'm kind of. I want to see how terrible things get. And this. I think there's a uh, spectrum thing happening around here. Because occasionally it does that noise. And I'm not sure what's doing it. I think it's a spectrum thing. But yeah, I want to kind of see what it looks like if you don't use P2P and you run these big thick cables everywhere. Probably kind of a mess, but then we're trying to make like a factory, so that might actually look kind of cool uh, by the end of it. We'll see. It might be a horrible, horrible mess, but we can always like rip everything out and, and, and do it again. So here are the things we don't have. Now, I think I remembered seeing this on the Discord, but Tech Reborn's Platinum Dust is significantly easier to get than modern industrializations to the point where it's probably not intended. Um, because we can find iridium ore and then we could just chuck it in a industrial grinder. I don't think we have an industrial grinder. We don't. Uh, I don't think they're too hard. Industrial grinder. Uh, doesn't look too bad. It's not bad at all. So you could go that route. And we can get uh, iridium ore either by mining 
or titanium drills, which we can't make yet. We can't make them yet. <laughs> Those are really expensive. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to be getting a stack of Iridium drills. So this is probably the easiest way to go, uh, is getting this. Otherwise, we're doing platinum dust from this platinum tiny dust, which we get uh, with this purified sulfuric acid and sulfuric solution, and that needs the raw platinum ore, which we're going to use in a chemical reactor and process it that way. Now we can't. Yes, yeah, so you'd have to silk touch the ore, which it's not particularly difficult. If you're up to the point where you're using iridium, uh, <laughs> yeah, you probably you probably got silk touch. But I'm going to go this route. So raw platinum, I don't think we have. We have 144 raw platinum. Okay. And wait, what, what, how did we get this? How did we get raw platinum? Oh, because we get platinum from stainless steel drills. Right, okay, cool. So with a bit of sulfuric acid and some raw platinum, we will get this platinum solution. And that was in a chemical reactor. So I'm going to set that up. Uh, I think we're just pumping sulfuric acid straight into here. I kind of need like a fluid uh, viewing thing. We've got 500 buckets of sulfuric acid. Now, I don't know what we're like on channels actually, but I think it's probably time to start coming out. Maybe this far so we can run cables and have them not connect. Actually, we can use cable anchors. I'll try and run it this close. Might become a problem, might become a problem. So you're going to want some power and then I will find a channel. Uh, and I suspect this line looks pretty good. Cool, so raw platinum and him uh, is not actually piping into the machine. Uh, okay, I guess it is an auto input. It only does the other way. And we can keep sulfuric acid in as well. So since that doesn't work, we're going to have to guess, uh, and we can't, oh, this is going to be a slight pain. Let's, let's, uh, yeah, it's going to be messy. This is going to be messy. We will come across here and do that. That way we can item pipe and fluid pipe. These different bits and pieces in. So item pipe, you need to extract a uh, whitelist. Oh, and you just need to insert on a blacklist and then we should start seeing raw platinum. Nice. Kind of slow, kind of slow, but it's okay. And then we'll do fluid pipe. And there's no... There's no whitelisting. Cool. So that's going to keep the platinum in there. That's going to be getting us this thing, which... That's going to go straight into the system. I thought that was going to go straight into the system. Because I have... Oh, fluid order extraction enabled. There we go. Now we have some of that fluid coming into the system. Cool. And then you are going to keep platinum, that purified platinum stuff in here. Oh, wrong stuff. Wrong stuff. We're keeping the wrong stuff in stock. We want to keep the sulfuric solution in stock. Neat. There we go. That's what we want. You are going to extract that out. That is going to produce the purified stuff as well as occasionally. Oh, that takes a lot. Occasionally that's going to produce um, that iridium. You are very slow. Okay, so that's going to get us the iridium. Nice. I think we can take that off there now. And the iridium we needed for... I forget. Ride this stuff. Producing this monocrystalline silicon. Okay. Now, I've got some canthal coils on the way. Uh, so we can upgrade our other blast furnace. And then he can be the one that handles argon. 
And we've got some advanced machine hulls in case we need them. Yeah, but these campfire coils are not finished. Because you're still crafting these hot ingots. Okay. What else can we set up in the meantime? Oh, polyvinyl final chloride is going to be a whole thing, isn't it? Uh, mono crystalline. We need argon. I think we just have argon in the system. Totally. No, we don't. Right. So we need to f figure out where we get argon from. Liquid air. Ah. Huh. Okay. That's not bad. Or a heat exchanger. Uh, probably not that way. So we need liquid air, and that's a pressurizer. Okay, here we go. Or we can use a vacuum freezer to get us liquid air. Now, this is all titanium, so probably not this route. That looks way more expensive. I think another vacuum freezer. And we can have a vacuum freezer just sitting here, constantly producing uh, liquid air. Because this is used for crafting, so we don't really want to load this one up. Uh, unless he can craft two things at once, let's not, let's not do that. Uh, so this was what? Frostproof machine casings. So we've got a couple of them. Uh, and we want another vacuum freezer though. That shouldn't be too major. It used to be, but I think that's okay now. And we'll whip up another one of them. And that'll let us get some argon. So we have an air intake. We should have a vacuum freezer. So this is going to go here. Um, let's see, item input, fluid output. Let's do fluid output here. You know what, let's do the input here because this is just a, that's all this is gonna be used for. So you're gonna take an air intake. You're going to run, and you're going to fully overclock. Yeah, power might start becoming an issue. I don't know, we're keeping up cool at the moment. I mean, we've got we've still got this bunch of energy storage, which, yeah, yeah, doesn't hold all of your energy. You're producing this liquid air, and then I think I wanted a centrifuge to get argon. A centrifuge, we'll just have a centrifuge constantly running. Um, taking in that air. So let's get a centrifuge. Probably should have crafted that before. <sighs> Another situation where keeping all of this stuff in stock would be good. Uh, yeah, we should probably think about getting onto that. I might do that kind of when I'm not recording. Just set up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Uh, we should also have the canthal coils so we can upgrade our blast furnace, which is going to be nice. And then you're going to take argon, which we're just starting to process. And that's going to be cool. One centrifuge later. Cool. You want to live. You could just go right here. Uh, you're not going to automatically input, though, is the problem. Uh, we could move this, we could put you here. I don't really know what the best place is. I mean, liquid air is infinite, right? Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's chuck in the fluid output edge here. You're going to start producing liquid air. You are going to centrifuge liquid air. You're going to fluid pipe liquid air into the stewed. You need three buckets of it, and then you also need power. And I might just run MV power because I don't seem to have LB cables nearby. It's one of those hulls. Uh, we have a problem with sulfuric acid, is why you're getting jammed up here. We ran out of sulfuric acid, so I happen to have a few aluminum drills left. Um, there's probably actually another way to make sulfuric acid. Sulfur, oxygen, and water. We might have to go this route. I think we've got a bunch of sulfur. Because um, we're actually a little bit low. Yeah, we've got, we got heaps of sulfur. We're probably going to have to end up doing that. But not right now. 
bounce machine hull. Let's get some electrical cables connected here. You're going to start producing all three of these things. You're going to auto extract and probably going to hook into this cable here. Uh, and I think we can go into a pattern provider or an interface is probably fine. I think an interface is probably fine. So you should extract and that should end up in here. It's a little bit slow, but again, this is just going to run non-stop. So that didn't extract, probably because I didn't actually set this up properly. There we go, extract there. There we go. A little bit of argon, some nitrogen and some oxygen. Probably handy stuff. We will, I guess, connect to here. That'll do. And you should start importing that into the system. Nice. And then we should end up with some argon ending up here. 70 millibuckets, that's not much. And that's used eventually. I oh, need that for making RAM as well, but we use it in the blast furnace for making this monocrystalline silicon. If we had any iridium tiny dust. I don't think we have that. I don't, we don't have any iridium yet. But cool, bit more production happening. Uh, factory coming along. I think I've got some mining to go do. We might upgrade the Paxil next episode and go see if we can just mine some iridium. Because uh, that looks like it's going to take a while uh, for us to get it. Uh, it's like a byproduct of that uh, platinum processing. Anyway, it's been Classic Duff. Thanks for watching. Come back next time for some more All of Fabric 5. See ya.